First Chronicles chapter 21 verse 18. Very important part of our Bible. Because tonight we're going to look at the title deed. To where the dumb of the rock is today. We're going to look at the title deed where Ezra is going to build the most holy place. Rebuild. We're going to look at the place where Solomon builds the holy place. The most holy place. We're going to look at the temple where Jesus Christ walked in. And according to the Bible, which God's word, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. The words of Jesus Christ, who is God. What we're going to read, the title deed today is settled forever in heaven. I don't care what the United Nations say. I don't care what the Arabians say. I don't care what presidents say, kings or queens. This land that is much, much controversy today has been purchased by David, what we're going to read today. Verse 18. Then the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David, that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. David went up at the same Gad, which he spanked in the name of the Lord. And Ornan turned back and saw the angel and his four sons with him and hid themselves. Now Ornan was threshing wheat. That's interesting. Wheat makes bread. And as David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David and went out of the threshing floor and bowed himself to David with his face to the ground. Then David said to Ornan, Grant me the place of the threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for full price, that the plague be, may be stayed from the people. And Ornan said to David, Take it to thee. Let my lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for a burnt offering, and for a threshing instruments for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering, I give it all. And King David said to Ornan, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price. I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offerings without cost. And I may... Christians today will do something in the Lord's service and they don't pay for it. And it's got to cost you something to serve the Lord. It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you effort. It's going to cost you something if you want to serve the Lord. It's not free. Nothing is free. It's at a cost to somebody else. And David's not going to take advantage of this free offer by order. No, this is for the Lord. I'm paying for it. And I'm going to pay full price. Don't give me a discount. I'm not coming to you with a coupon. I'm not coming to you with a yellow tag sale. I'm coming to you. I want to pay the full price for the Lord. I will not take that which is thine. Long as the Ornan, for the Lord. I'm going to give it to the Lord. Look, he's going to buy from Ornan to give it to the Lord. David's is going to purchase it. David's not going to take possession. He's giving it to the Lord. Nor offer burnt offerings without cause. So David gave to Ornan for the place. Now notice for the place because when we get to 2 Samuel, there is, you know, a contradiction they say. For the place, 600 shekels of gold by weight. The place. The land that the threshing floor is around and all that's around the threshing floor. The entire property where the temple is going to sit. is cost 600 shekels of gold. There it is recorded. Because when we get to 2 uh, Samuel, it's going to say 50. Well, 50 is a lot different from the 600. First Chronicles records the property. The land. We'll get to Second Samuel in a moment. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven. That'd be God answered him. So God approves of what just happened. Make a little notes here. So what David just done, God answered. And how did God answer him? And he answered him from fi from heaven by fire upon the altar to burn offerings. Now we saw that with Elijah. 
He builds that altar. He covers it with water. He covers it with water. Covers with water. And fire came down. That's one of God's ways in the Old Testament. I approve what just happened. I have approved what you're doing. I approve of this man. That's not going to happen today. You can call all the fire down you want. We're not by signs. Jews require a sign. And here's a sign right here for David. You did well. You did well. And David doesn't set a fire upon that altar. David lays out the altar, lays out the animals and the wood and everything the way it should be. And God says, okay, burn it up. Like Elijah. And the Lord commanded the angel, still there, the angel of the Lord, and he put up his sword again into the sheep thereof. So he's been holding that sword out the whole time. Joshua has been holding the spear out all during the battle. I believe it was Ai. Joshua, Jehovah saves. And at that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor at the fire of Ornan and the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, yeah, that's Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's that tabernacle that, that, that went through all the wilderness journeys. You know, you had the, the goat skins, you had the badger skins, you had the linen, you had the brazen altar, all the instruments that Moses made in the wilderness and the altar of the burnt offerings, that's the brazen altar, were at the season in the high place of Gideon. Gideon. So, right here, verse 29 tells us, guess what? That tabernacle is going to be moved. That place that David wants to set for God, there it is. It's on this fleshing floor that now belongs to God, paid for by David. But David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. <laughs> Here's his, here's his angel. And David wants to go into that tabernacle, but, you know, the, sword, the angel's there. David feared God. David's been in all kinds of battles. He went up against Goliath. And can you imagine the size of the sword that Goliath had? I don't know what the size of the sword that the angel of the Lord would have. David went up to him, boom, 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 boom. And when we read about Goliath, when David grabbed his sword and cut off Goliath's head, it says the sword was still in the sheath. Goliath hadn't even pulled out his sword yet. The angel of the Lord, he's got that sword. He's got it in the air, ready to go. Jesus Christ has got his sword. It comes out of his mouth and it's ready to go at the second advent. Now, 2 Samuel 24. 2 Samuel 24. Verse 18. This is great reading. The Living Bible doesn't give any price at all for what David paid. Well, when you do a transaction such as property or a vehicle, something of great value, one of the things that needs to be recorded on that document is names, the place, or the item. And how much? So the Living Bible doesn't consider this to be a title deed. And Gad came that day to David and said to him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arna. This is a different spelling. The Jebusite. And David, according to the same Gad, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arnon looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. And Arnon went out and bowed himself before the king. On his face, upon the ground. Now, Second Samuel points more of the interaction of David and Arnon more than an angel. What happened between David and Arnon is, is more recorded in Second Samuel. And Arnon said, "Wherefore is my lord the king come unto the servant, <laughs> that big angel over there?" <laughs> and David said, "To buy the threshing floor of thee, to build an altar unto the Lord, that the plague may be stayed from the people." And Arnon said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. It's for you, king. Take it. Pray. 
Behold, here are here be oxen for the burnt off that sacrifice, and the threshing instruments, and other instruments of the oxen for wood. Everything's there ready to go. Uh, it's like God knew what time, God knew what day, God knew what place. And I don't think Arnon would have any idea to say, all right, grab all this stuff, let's go. Well, Dad, why are we bringing that? Just bring it, all right? We never bring that. Just bring it. Just bring it. Maybe. I don't know. And all these things did Arnim as a king gave. All these things did Arnim as a king. We talked about that the other night. That's kind of weird. Give unto the king. That's David. And Arnim said unto the king. That's David. The Lord thy God accept thee. And the king David said unto Arnim. Nay. But I will surely buy of thee at a price. I'm not taking it free. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So David bought, there's the title deed right there. The threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And First Chronicles 21 said, well, it was, I think it was 500 shekels. It said the place. The 50 shekels is for the threshing floor itself and for the oxen, not counting all the property. That's, there's no problem. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings, which the oxen he paid for, on the property that he paid for, and peace offerings. So the Lord entreated for the land and the plague was stayed from Israel. And that closes 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel closes. This land has been purchased by the king. Documented facts. Documented 2 Samuel. Documented 1 Chronicles. That piece of land over there. By God. God's word. I don't care you don't believe in God. That's your problem. I don't care you don't believe in the Bible. That's your problem. I don't care you got a modern Bible. You're wrong. The King James Bible sent by God. Has recorded that David has bought that piece of land. And any time that God has fit to his prophecies, to his timeline of events that no man can change but God himself, he's going to revolt that dome in the rock. And one day in the millennium, he will set forth that most holies of holies. With Jesus Christ as king of kings. David as the prince, and they'll re go right back to sacrificing. They'll go back to the offerings, the peace offering, and all that's spoken about in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy will be all over again in this peaceful, this fruitful, this uncursed 1,000 year reign of Jesus Christ. And what gives God the right to do that? It's recorded in His Word. There it is. That land, even though something else is there today, that land belongs to David. And God will come back and collect what is his. That's a prophecy, by the way. That land title deed, that land grant there, that's a prophecy. God will come back and claim what is his. 